so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze neze unwa neze pepe rempe and this is nezeville in today's video guys we're going to be dissecting and talking about something very serious okay just recently i read on social media of a very very sad case that involved a nigerian couple resident in the united states i'm sure many of us have come across this story it's a story of double mother suicide involving a man his wife and his mother-in-law news are still very sketchy about the incidences that led to that tragedy but what happened what made it to the news that we know of at least for now is that a husband broke into the home executed his wife went ahead to execute her mother and then turned the gun to himself and took his own life sometimes i wonder how does it get to that level in marriage as in, how does it get to that stage this is a person that you loved so much like you were willing to give up everything for you were crazy about at what point does it get to that stage where you hate the person to the extent that you can kill the person and not only do you hate the person to that extent you hate the person listen that you don't mind taking your own life just to hurt that person it is crazy and that is not a standalone case there have been so many cases recently seeing nigerians in diaspora in very very bitter and compromising situations just last month again there was a video a viral video of a nigerian wife kicking her husband out of their matrimonial home the police was there you know you know you know you know what you know things that we're not really used to in nigerian marriages so i began to ask myself why are nigerian marriages especially nigerian marriages in diaspora why are they failing why are they not lasting why are they getting more and more short lived every day so into this video guys i'm going to be telling you all the reasons why i think that marriages especially nigerian marriages abroad do not last and please note that this is not to say that marriages are not failing everywhere marriages are failing everywhere the lifespan of marriages now are nothing compared to what it used to be in those days I'm going to address why Nigerian marriages in Nigeria are failing in a subsequent video. But in today's video, my focus will be on Nigerian diaspora marriages and why they are not lasting more than 14 business days. The first reason is what I refer to as culture shock. The typical Nigerian or African man is groomed right from a tender age to be seen as the king, the lord, the head of the home, the strongest person in the home, the one who has the control and call the shots in the home. While the woman, on the other hand, is seen as not just a weaker vessel, is seen as a more delicate vessel, the homemaker, the homekeeper, the caregiver in the family, and one who should stay submissive and under her king now this setup and this orientation has been deeply engraved in the subconscious and the mentalities of so many nigerian men especially those that were born and bred in nigeria going from that mindset and that ideology that the man is supreme in the home to a society that believes in equality a society that sees the man and the woman as equals a society that believes in equal rights equal roles equal responsibilities equal powers and equal benefits that may be very hard to contain that may be very hard to get used to and that may lead to a sequence of other incidences that could catapult in ending that marriage if care is not taken a woman in diaspora is different from a woman in nigeria the woman in diaspora is protected by the law she knows her rights she cannot be trampled upon she understands that she has the full backing of legislation behind her some women despite knowing all these still choose to stay humble and submissive and go out of their way to make their marriage work some on the other hand might tilt towards abusing these privileges might tilt towards being impatient knowing that whether or not that marriage is 
they are covered. So when the typical African man starts to feel belittled, boxed, smaller, weaker, stripped of his innate reflex and impulse to be the head and the leader of the home. It can bring about strains and strains in that marriage that will drain the two parties and make them lose interest because they will not be able to understand each other and meet themselves halfway. The second reason why I believe that marriages abroad do not last or are not working or lasting as much as the ones in Nigeria is that that stigma that stigma that society places on divorced people especially divorced women in nigeria is almost inexistent or at its barest minimum in diaspora i know we all like to lie to ourselves that we don't give an f <laughs> we don't give a shit and we don't have a care in the world about what people think or say about us should i tell you something that's a big lie as human beings we have the natural impulse to crave acceptance and although I admit that some people care more than the others it is totally impossible not to give one single them as a human being how society perceives you or how your environment accepts you is one of the basic needs of man so being in a society that frowns heavily at a certain thing might influence your decision or your actions towards that thing now let me bust your bubble do you know that in nigeria a lot of couples are married not because they love each other not because they want to stay married to one another in fact for all intents and purposes that marriage might well have been dead long ago it's loveless it's sexless but they rather remain in that marriage because of society's perception on divorce they don't want to let their family down they don't want their colleagues at work to look down on them as that divorced woman they don't want that stigma that comes with being divorced there is a stigma in as much as it's repulsive it's sad because many people don't choose to divorce because of the fun of it many people had to plow that route because that was the only option for them to stay alive now being judged based on your marital status is unfortunate but it's a reality in Nigeria even at the place of work that stigma follows you there you cannot conveniently correct a subordinate or have a misunderstanding with a colleague without people attributing it to mm, that is her character that is why she couldn't stay married that is why no man can stay with her it is a nasty stigma and when so many people consider this that cloud that follows them everywhere as that divorced person, as that divorced woman, many people just choose to stay married. Dicking and dickiness, China Zekwere, coming out during church. Hallelujah! We've been married for 30 years without knowing that half of that marriage was spent not talking to each other. Half of the years of that marriage was spent not eating each other's food. Half of those years were spent not even touching each other or having any sexual activities with one another. But to the eyes of the public, you are a marriage role model. And so many Nigerians would rather live in that bubble, would rather live in that fool's paradise just to keep up with the Joneses. But on the other hand, in diaspora, that much stigma is not attached to a divorced woman. She is still viewed as a respectable member of the society. She is not seen as Miss Hot Pants or, or a failure. Rather, she is even seen as a hero, especially a woman that walked out of an abusive marriage. The society sees her as a hero. The society supports her. She can't lose out on a, on, on a job or on an entitlement because of her personal life. A divorced person can lead a normal life without being victimized or without being looked down on. So it's not like marriages are rosy in Nigeria and that's why the divorce is less. It's just that the society is less tolerable to divorced people in Nigeria. That's why people remain in sad and loveless marriages unlike abroad where people can easily come out of bad marriages without prejudice. And that explains why in diaspora, people are more receptive to the idea of divorcing. Another reason why marriages seem not to last abroad as compared to in Nigeria is that abroad or in diaspora, you still stand a high chance of leading a comfortable and standard life 
whether you are single or you are married. You do not need to be married for you to be able to afford three square meals. So many women in Nigeria have their marriage as a meal ticket, have a marriage as a means of sustaining and maintaining a lifestyle, their standard of living, not because they are not sick of the marriage, but because they know that once they leave that marriage, they are going to lose everything. In Nigeria, there are not so many laws that protect the woman. If a typical Nigerian woman leaves her marriage, she lives with nothing. Nobody's going to tell your husband to, leave, to move out of the house for you. Just take a look at what is happening with Fanny Kayode and Princess Chikwendo. She left empty-handed. This is a woman that stayed with this man, bought children for him. She didn't even live with her children. That is the reality of getting a divorce in Nigeria. But in other Sena climes, it almost seems like the benefits of single parenting, the benefits of divorcing is even higher and more attractive than the benefits of staying married. That almost encourages divorce. Almost encourages divorce. Now you're married and you want to divorce. And you know that when you divorce, you get half of the man's wealth. You get a watering, irresistible amount of money monthly as a lay money. You get child support. You get a car. You get the house. <laughs> Some women, what they take a look at, when they weigh their options, they find that it is even more lucrative to be divorced. The judicial system favors the woman. The law favors the woman. The society favors the woman. So the woman is confident that the marriage is not her all in all. She can get a job, she can eat, she can, the government can take care of her children, their fees. Many women are staying married in Nigeria because they need a man to pay their children's school fees. Your mother-in-law will tell you, my dear, just manage this, sit down there, let that stupid man help you train your children because you cannot do it by yourself. When women know that with or without that marriage, they will be well catered to, there now becomes a limit to the kind of nonsense that she can tolerate or to her endurance level. Another reason why I think that Nigerian marriages in diaspora are crashing and crashing every day more now than ever is because the chances of reconciliation are much slimmer abroad than they are in Nigeria. In Nigeria, we are surrounded by family, nuclear and extended. At the mention of the word the D, even before you can say was D, you have your pastor, your spiritual leader, your grandma, your godmother, your mother and her best friend, <laughs> the community chief, <laughs> ready and willing to act as mediators and reconciliators. But over there, you are basically on your own. Nobody is trying to bend over backwards to make your marriage work for you. If you want to get a divorce, you get a divorce. Nobody's going to force you to stay. But in Nigeria, there are more chances of reconciliation. Even the judicial system can frustrate you to reconciliation. <laughs> By the time they adjourn your, your divorce case for more than three years, nobody, nobody will tell you to get reconciled with your husband. But over there, it's, it's a bit easier. It's more straightforward. Nobody's forcing you. No pastor is calling you for prayers. If you go to a counselor, and the, the counselor um, tries to counsel you and the, the, the therapist says that you both of you are done with each other, they recommend you to split. But in Nigeria, your mother is going to the mountain with you. Your, your, the, the two families are trying to reconcile you. It is not all fires in a marriage that are meant to burn down the marriage. Some fires come to reignite the flames in that marriage. But when you are in a place where you are surrounded by people and an environment that's with that more or less encourages the divorce. You tend to tilt towards that area. Some people in diaspora have their families there, but how many families would you have around you? Unlike here in Nigeria, that the next day your mother has come, your father-in-law is calling a meeting, or your pastor wants to mend both of you, and you see that if you give it a chance sometimes, you see that the marriage might survive that, that phase. Every marriage sometimes gets to, get to the stage where you are like, I don't want to do this. I can't, if I live with this man for one more day, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm done. But sometimes you are not done. 
Sometimes it's just the face. Sometimes you're just upset. Sometimes you're just frustrated. Sometimes you're just going through the marriage. And it can phase away sometimes. So being surrounded with a good support system that is very anti-divorce can play a very huge role on why Nigerian marriages in Nigeria tend to last longer than those abroad. The last and final reason, guys, if I didn't mention earlier, as I'm stating my reasons, please state yours in the comment section. What do you think is the reason why a lot of Nigerian marriages abroad, in fact, on social media, show of shame and all of that, they're not lasting anymore. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts about this particular topic. So let me go to my last point. My last point why I believe that Nigerian marriages are not lasting again is there is a higher chance of you leading a normal life, both a pers normal personal life and a normal love life abroad after a divorce. You know, when you know that when you divorce, <laughs> You have become an automatic tokumbo. Men would even make it seem like they are doing you a favor by dating you, by even sleeping with you, by giving you money. Where you know that families would fight their son because their son wants to get married to a divorcee. Where you know that your chances of getting remarried again is one in a thousand. Sometimes you just hold the one that you have and manage if the situation is not very critical. But abroad, the chances that a woman who is divorced finds love again is very, very high. And that, if you don't know, can be in your subconscious and influence your decision to divorce if you feel that marriage you had has saved this cause and you don't want it anymore. Just because you know one or two people that have been divorced and found love again and are remarried does not change the fact that it is difficult for a larger number of people. Just paint this picture. Let us paint this picture. Mama Kechi's son. Oh, let me use a man's name. Mama Pius. Her son just came back from the university, just graduated from the university, just got a job. Young man under 30. And he brings home a woman, a divorcee, three children. One at the back, one on the hand, one on the head. I said, Mommy, this is a woman I want to marry. I, man, who are these children? Oh, it's her children. She's a divorcee. The first reaction of a typical Nigerian mother will be like, What? Is she guinea? Your mother will be like, as in the mother will be like, What? What did you say? Of all the eligible spinsters in town, it is a divorcee that you went to pick as a wife. Eh? In fact, your mother would even start crying. She will start crying that the village people have caught her. Her enemies have finally won the battle. She's going to see it like, <laughs> like a tragedy has befallen her. Do you understand? It's crazy. But abroad, divorced people still have an opportunity to find love again, find marriage again, settle down again, get remarried, and you don't lead a normal life. And when you know that if you leave a marriage, there's still a huge chance that you would get remarried again, that you would find love again and have a decent love life, you find that you are more inclined towards the person because you know that there's still hope for love. So guys, we have come to the end of today's video. Do let me know what you think in the comment section. You guys know that this channel is for progressive thinkers. If, I'm, if you're myopic, this channel is not for you. This channel is for intelligent people that can see arguments from two sides of a coin and make intelligent contribution without feeling shots have been fired at them anyways guys do drop in the comment section what you think is the reason for the high rates of divorce of nigerians africans in diaspora give this video a thumbs up if you haven't yet hit the subscribe icon drop a comment in the comment section and i'm going to see you guys in my next video it's me your girl barista Nessa. Nessa, mwah, Nessa, pepe, pepe. and this is nezabel